think, correct me if I'm wrong, Jack, your favourite prospect in the draft? I love Anthony Richardson. It's, yeah. it's, it's, what's there not to love? So we got a, he's a red shirt sophomore out of Florida. He's a four star recruit, 6'4, 236 pounds, an uber athlete, an incredible player with the ball in his hands, super dynamic. Get away, Jack. I mean, yeah, I, I was, when he came out, I, I, I'd not studied him much during the season because he was a red shirt sophomore and you think, right, he's, He's going to go back to school. I don't see him declaring. And then he did. And I was like, wow, okay, that's a surprise. I mean, that told me immediately, like, he's getting good feedback from NFL teams because you don't declare as a redshirt sophomore unless you are getting really good feedback. I dived into the tape and I wasn't sure what I was going to get. I was really pleasantly surprised. Um, I'd, you know, you, you see the size and the arm strength. And the fact that he's a good athlete, and I've seen a lot of people use that as a way of going, well, him and Levis are in a kind of similar bucket. They're both <laughs> big guys with big arms who can move. And it's like, no, that like they're re- they're really not. I, I I I don't understand how you can't have if you like tools, Richardson needs to be ahead of Levis for you. Like I I can understand. I'm not saying I would do this because it would be a risky move. I can understand why a team would take him number one overall. And that might be like seen as crazy to some. Um, and I do get that. Like, let's be honest, the film is raw. There, there is some real areas that he needs to work on. You'll see it in these clips. His mechanics are a mess. Like... Uh, Maybe the worst I've studied in this year's class and about 10 quarterbacks in this year. And he, his certainly his lower body mechanics are probably the worst. Like his footwork's a complete mess. You'll see the odd play where it's absolutely perfect. And then the next play, it's a mess. He bounces a lot in the pocket. He just gets disjointed. And that leads to his accuracy issues. Um, you know, he completed 50-something percent of his passes in 2022, he was, if you look at adjusted completion percentage, he was 141st out of 155 uh, FBS quarterbacks. So, yeah, that's not good. But mechanics are fixable. Like, certainly, like footwork, we've seen guys come in. You know, don't forget, this is his first year as a starter. Get him in an NFL program with a good quarterback coach, certainly over this offseason as well. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we see quite a substantial improvement between this season and the combine. You know, if he's yep. at the combine and he's throwing at the combine, I wouldn't be surprised to see some improved footwork. Um, but in terms of what's there to like, I mean, the arm is elite. The arm is absolutely elite in terms of his arm strength. He can hit every single throw. His ability to do it off platform is also just rare. Like there really aren't many guys, even in the NFL, I think, who can make some of those throws that he can make. Um, he's a legit athlete as well. Like that LSU game, he had that massive touchdown run. And you're just looking at him, he's like 200, he's listed at 232 pounds. You think, okay, he's going to be a big bruiser. I mean, he was separating from defensive backs in the open field. Like he's, I wouldn't be surprised if he ran in the 4-4s. It's probably more like the 4-5s if he does run at all. I mean, quarterbacks don't tend to run these days, certainly the the more athletic ones. So he might not, but I'd be expecting like 4-5s at at least. Um, But I think what doesn't get talked about enough is his pocket presence. He had a 9.2% pressure to sack rate, which is easily the best amongst draft eligible quarterbacks. Um, I was looking at this the other day. It's better than almost all of the top guys in the NFL achieved during their time in college. I think Mahomes was somewhere around 10% and he's like the best in the NFL at doing that along with everything else. Um, but that ability to navigate pressure, that ability to to work the pocket, to climb the pocket, to feel pressure, that that's a rare thing, especially in a guy in his first year starting. Like that's that's special. Add in his ability to to actually read coverage. Don't get me wrong; it is still a work in progress at times. But there's a play that sticks out um, from the Utah game where they ran a really funky kind of inverted cover two that just completely different picture post-snap to pre-snap. 
Richardson, not flustered at all, finds the right throw. It was like a third and 15 as well. And he got the first down. And you look at that and you think, well, that's that's an NFL throw because that's the kind of coverage you're going to see on a Sunday. So if he can do that, yeah, he needs to improve on his consistency. But I'm seeing absolutely everything that you want or nearly everything other than the accuracy. And I think that's the biggest difference for me between him and Levis is that I never really saw Levis wanting to progress through his reads. Richardson made wrong reads. Sometimes, as you said, his accuracy can wane. I think sometimes he tries to kind of fire the ball through the door rather than place it in the keyhole and he's trying to throw the ball too hard rather than drop it in. But there is a willingness to to almost try. There's a willingness to try and progress the reads. There's a willingness, you know, he was a better athlete than 90% of the players on the field with him. But he wasn't just, right, first read, now I'm taking off, I'm going to run for 10 yards. He was trying to get it done from the pocket. And yeah, when he had to, he broke the pocket and he was great at it. When he had to, he was able to throw off platform. He was able to scramble, but he wasn't just trying to do it the second that he had to. And I think that for me, I don't think I'd get there, but Richardson is the only player in this draft class that I could see me taking 101 other than Bijan. Because I think that if you believe in the talent, if he gets potentially top 15 draft capital with his rushing production that you're going to have at the next level in a super flex league, he could be an absolute cheat code. You know, we've seen it with Justin Fields this last year where his value went from not being worth a first round pick to now you probably can't get him for anything less than three firsts. And that's what Anthony Richardson could be because he has that elite rushing upside. And Yes, don't get me wrong. I'm not taking him at 101. I'm not taking him at 102 at the moment because there are those concerns. There are still a lot of, you know, you talked about his mechanics, a lot of elements that need work in terms of reading the game and 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 basically breaking down defences. But the raw talent is there. The potential is there. And if he gets the right landing spot on the ability, I know we talk about rookie quarterbacks and it's, oh, it would be great if they sat. It really would be good if Anthony Richardson could sit and work on those mechanics and find an offense that he can get settled into and can use his strengths so that he can develop. But I don't think he's like a Malik Willis where Malik Willis was drafted and it was like, right, okay, this guy's probably two years away from being an NFL caliber quarterback. I think Richardson could get there immediately. I just want him to have some time to get settled in so that he can not be rushed. Yeah, I completely agree. Like, I've seen the Willis comparison being made as well. And again, it's, just lazy. It, yeah, it's, it's daft. It's like, oh, okay, he's he's a good athlete and he can like throw the ball through a barn door. <laughs> like, there you go. Um, I also don't think there's a coincidence that Anthony Richardson's black and he gets compared to Malik Willis. Will Levis is white. He gets compared to Josh Allen. And it's like, come on, like, <laughs> there's... <laughs> You know, they're, they're, they're such different players. Like, Willis was playing in a really gimmicky, RPO-heavy Liberty offense against really bad competition and looked bad against bad competition. Um, Richardson's playing in the SEC, executing pro concepts. Like you say, consistency is not there, but you do see him make those progressions. You do see him find kind of the backside reads. Um, you see full field stuff at times. You know, they're, they're not the same. I, I'm with you. I'd probably want him to sit. Um, I, I wouldn't, like, be terrified of him starting as a rookie. But I'd want him to sit. Um, if you can land him in somewhere like, you know, Indy or Carolina, I think that could be really, really good for him. Um, certainly Carolina with a guy, you know, like Frank Reich. That would just be an exciting an exciting offense to to see him in and i wouldn't be surprised if he ends up going you know top five i've even got a bet on him going number one overall so 